Hello, hello. Welcome back to Real Life Fishing. So in the previous episode, I mentioned uh, that mount sitting over there on the floor and why I wasn't ultimately terribly pleased with the way I decided to run these cords up underneath there because I'm going to try and make a very long story short and uh, omit the names of the guilty parties so that, um, you know, they're, they're not offended or whatever. But long story short, I, uh, while I was on uh, annual musky trip, I smashed the trolling motor into some stuff. Uh, one place fixed it, didn't do a good job, uh, took it someplace else, and uh, they did a better job and um, found, uh, found what ended up being the, the problem. Um, but so as a result of all of that, uh, the, the reason that I'm making this video here, I guess uh, a lot of the details aren't terribly important uh, other than perhaps entertainment value. But um, the, the reason I'm making this video is uh, the reason I took it to that second repair shop is that um, I was getting some interference on my side imaging. Uh, down imaging, there was no interference. In 2D, there was no interference. Uh, and mind you, this was from, or this was at the, uh, at the console graph, because um, there's no bow graph on. Uh, I ended up having to ship that off to uh, Humminbird for repair as part of that, um, part of that trolling motor crashing incident. Uh, who knew that apparently when you uh, smash up your trolling motor, you can, create an electrical problem that will uh, damage a graph that is connected to it via the transducer. Yeah, I didn't know that. So now that's making me question whether or not I wanna plug that transducer back into that graph. Um, I probably will, I'll just drive it a lot more carefully, but in any event, um, so the, uh, the side imaging interference, um, that was something I had, I had read about, I had uh, heard about while I was you know, researching this, uh, this motor, um, you know, as a, as a refresher, if you're new to the channel, um, I've got a 2018, um, Minn Kota Altera 80, 24 volt, uh, iPilot link with Bluetooth, uh, 60 inch shaft, but that's kind of irrelevant to the story here in any event. Um, so I, I was out over the weekend fishing out of the back of the boat. And uh, that's how I noticed that every time the trolling motor would spin, uh, I would have side imaging interference. So uh, I quick hopped on the Googles and uh, lo and behold, uh, the, the, one of the first results uh, was something that I had forgotten about, but read about when I was doing research on this, uh, this trolling motor. And that is this guy right here. This was the culprit, three amp fuse. And if you look, you can see that this thing is blown. See that? Blown, not bueno. So where is that little three amp fuse? That three amp fuse is underneath the head here. So you can see this clamshell has a seam in it, right? Right here. And so there are five screws underneath, right? So there's one there, there's one under there, and then there's three on this side, one towards the top, one in the very front and, and one down there. So you take those five screws out <clears throat> and the head comes apart. You know, the, the clamshell comes off the top and inside of there, you'll find a brown wire with one of those weather resistant capped fuse holders and it holds a micro three amp fuse. So I took that apart. Sure enough, that little three amp fuse was broken. So, or blown. So I put another one in there the instant I turn that motor on, snap, damn it. So I put another fuse, turn the motor off, put another fuse in there, turn it on, same thing again. So now I start reading more about this. And so there's a whole lot of electrical theory that goes into this that I really don't have the background to properly explain to you. But uh, in a nutshell, so near as I can understand that additional ground sets up a Faraday cage inside of the lower unit of the trolling motor, which keeps all of the RFI from the spinning armature and the brushes inside of that case so that it doesn't leak RFI into 
the water column where you'll see it as interference um, or, or you know feed it back through various other parts of the system well with that fuse blown you know that that ground is no longer connected so uh, that's why i was seeing that interference so what caused that fuse to blow and if you're a, a diy or you're out of warranty or uh you know you're on vacation you gotta try and troubleshoot and fix this yourself you know you're on a fishing trip what have you um what, what causes that how how did this happen in mine i managed to get a picture of the inside of my motor before it was repaired properly by the second shop um i'd really like to tell you who they are but for warranty reasons and so forth i'm going to refrain from providing a ton of details but suffice to say that uh, they they fixed it properly and um I, like i said i got a picture of what was the matter with the original motor that was uh, improperly or the original repair that was improperly performed by the first shop so let me insert that photo now I look at that the magic of editing I'm still standing right here in my garage still recording but you're gonna see that photo when I play this back that's so cool anyhow if you look at that photo put it up again for you notice the ring terminal that the brown wire is connected to it's not the uh, ring terminal itself is not insulated on the end of that wire so that barrel that's the brown wire is uh, that slides into where it's crimped that barrel is t a, like damn near touching where the ground should be that's attached to that brush assembly um, that ground wire that was in there was horribly horribly loose uh, to the point where as soon as you opened it up the, the ground wire just kind of fell off uh, so that was that was improperly reassembled and then what was happening was um, you know that ground wire was in there and loose so because it was loose there was resistance there so this trolling motor draws like 50 or 54 amp uh, wide open. So that, that 50 or 54 amp was coming down, you know, the, the positive cable and trying to get back out through the ground. And the ground had greater resistance than that 3 amp circuit did, that little brown wire. So it tried to ride that back up and obviously blew the, the 3 amp fuse. Uh, so frankly, the, the shop was kind of shocked that the trolling motor worked at all uh, after that shoddy repair. But, um, you know, I, I did have some, some problems with it. It wouldn't deploy a couple times. It just beeped at me like there was low voltage. Uh, you know, another time I was driving to the dock and uh, the motor was on and, and stowed. I was driving on the outboard, just kind of slow, no wake, approaching the dock. And the motor beeped at me a few times. And I, just all kinds of random nonsense. You know, it was, it was just misbehaving terribly uh, since I got it back from that, that shop with that crappy repair. Um, I got, man, I'd really love to tell you who that shop was, but eh, I, I probably shouldn't. Anyway, uh, yeah, so if, if you're a, a DIY, um, so let me get up towards the, the front of the motor here. I'll show you as best I can. I'm not taking this thing apart, so. This is a US2 motor, so if we look at this side of the motor here, so down the, the far left side there, you've got the US2 transducer. Right, then the, the center piece of this is the magnet uh, that the armature is inside. And then this end cap right here, this, this last, you know, what, I don't know, two and a half or three inches or so, something like that, um, right? That's uh, uh, your brush assembly is in there, right? So there's, uh, there's four wires that come down this, uh, this shaft, right? So you've got the, the red positive, the black negative, uh, you've got the transducer wire that comes down through here, and then you've got that black ground uh, that comes down through here, right? So those are all the wires that come down to here. So the transducer cable obviously you know goes over to this end of the transducer. The other three come down this shaft and turn like this and come down to uh, your brush assembly down here, right? So the the black wire. Uh, or the the brown wire as you can see in that that photo is a ring terminal that's connected to the brush assembly and then your negative is connected to one brush and your positive is connected to the other brush um, so if you go to take this thing apart it'll be uh, uh, two through bolts right you just pull off the prop and then there's two uh, two through bolts behind there 
you pull those and uh, then the whole thing comes apart and pull off this cap down here, kind of flip it, twist it over a little bit and then pull the armature out that way. Um, you know, grab it, pull it out that way and then you'll have access to uh, the, the brush assembly and the, and the wires and stuff in here. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's the, the lower, lower unit of an Altera in a nutshell. But yeah, so that improper wiring way down there caused you know, this guy to blow, uh, which broke that additional ground circuit, which destroyed the, uh, the Faraday cage setup down there. And so then interference on the, uh, on the side imaging graph. And um, if you're an electrical engineer, you could probably explain this stuff way better than I can. So if you are, uh, do me a favor and drop a, drop a note down in the comments there and correct me if necessary so that everybody has uh, the right information. Uh, that would be much appreciated. As always, if you uh, enjoyed this video or hopefully if you learned something from this video was my goal, uh, go ahead and do me a favor and click that like button down there on the bottom. Um, it won't take you but a second and won't cost you a thing and it'll really help me out. And if you're not subscribed yet, right over there, click that subscribe button for me. Uh, my goal with every video is to get one new subscriber. So if you're not subscribed yet, be my one. And if you are, thank you. And to all of you, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.